Some of you are wondering whether this light, this solar charge light that uses a fairly standard phone battery with the wires tacked onto the gold contacts, you're wondering whether it really does contain overcharge protection inside, so I decided to put that to the test. I got my bench power supply, limited the current to about 300 milliamps, and set the voltage for about 4.3 volts, and I hooked it onto the terminals. Uh, and monitor the voltage rising until it did actually cut off at 4.2 volts so it does have protection, the current just dropped instantly and the voltage shot up because it had disconnected from the battery. So um, I decided it would be quite interesting then to cobble up a charger for this and measure the capacity of the cell because I've almost fully discharged it, I've put a wee tiny bit in just to actually um, get it away from the sort of totally discharged state and I'm going to let that run flat laterally, but I'm going to improvise a charger for it in the following way. And it's very simple. So here's the lithium cell, and rather than do it complicated, oh, oh that, that started off really wrong there, haven't I? So um, I'll just start that again. Here's the lithium cell, and we'll just say here's a protection circuit. So I'll just say protection. It's not really like that. It's a wee bit more sophisticated. There's connections over to the other side and so on. But what I'm going to do is, uh, those are the two terminals we have on the battery pack, the positive and the minus. That's all we see. And I'm going to use a 5 volt power supply and I'm going to put a resistor probably on the negative. It doesn't really matter if it goes on the positive or on the negative. And the resistor value I'm going to use is 4 ohms. And the reason I'm going to be using 4 ohms is because, typically speaking, this cell is going to, in its discharge state, it's going to be about 3 volts. So there's going to be 2 volts of a difference from the 5 volts. And in its fully charged state, it's going to be close to 4 volts, so there's only going to be 1 volt difference. Now, this means that when I first connect it, um, with 4 ohms, so the resistance is 4 ohms, and in this case, I've actually used four uh, quarter watt one ohm resistors in series. And so the resistance is four ohms, and the current initially is going to be five minus three volts. So it's, that's two divided by the resistance of four ohms. So it's going to be about 500 milliamps. And when it's fully charged, there's only going to be about one volt difference. So it's going to be one divided by the four equals 250 milliamps. It's just a rough and ready thing. And the power dissipation um, initially is going to be 2 volts times 500 milliamps. It's going to be 1 watt, but it's not going to be 1 watt for long. And it is 4 quarter watt resistors in series, so each will be dissipating quarter of a watt. It will add up to 1 watt. But latterly, when it gets down to about here, it's only going to be about... Uh, it's going to be very low. It's going to be 1 times 250 milliamps. It's going to be 250 milliwatts, so it's not going to be very much at all. So let's uh, put that together, shall we? And I shall then charge it up via this device because I want to actually see what capacity this is. I would guess that since this type of cell is claims to be one amp power, I would guess this really is probably just going to be round about one to one point three amp power, maybe. But the only way to find out is to do this test. So let's um, get the leads and put this together. Now, the lead is butchered from a USB vacuum cleaner just because it's got a fairly, I was going to say beefy lead, but it's really not. It's very thin wires. But it's a very convenient USB lead with positive and negative. And before I do anything else, I'm going to get a cheapy meter. I'm going to use the cheapy meter because I have crocodile clips on it. So I'm going to hook the black onto the black, the red onto the red, and I'm going to plug this lead into a USB power supply and if it's correct polarity it will display 5 volts-ish which it's doing and if it was the wrong polarity it would display negative 5 volts so that is the correct polarity so that was just a polarity check before I do something absolutely horrendous so I'm going to put the resistors in the negative purely because it kind of suits the application a little bit better. It doesn't really matter if they go in the positive or the negative, just as long as they are in series. I'll just give that a wipe. So I'm going to put some solder in this. I've already tinned the um, leads. So I'm going to now scorch my fingers horribly by soldering this on. This tiny little wire. 
So that's on, and that is going to go to the negative. Now, the negative, rather conveniently from here, comes... I don't want to actually solder onto these terminals because they look a bit shady as they are, so I'm going to solder the negative from the resistor end onto the actual um, LED circuit board. So I'm just going to reflow that a little bit. Hopefully uh, the heat won't go right up the wire and uh, desolder from the battery pack. And then I'm going to tack my resistor array on there. So that's the negative connection made. And now I'm going to put a wee solder blob on this wire in here, a modest distance from the battery, again to avoid accidentally desoldering it from the battery. So I'm going to do it there, I don't even know if you're being able to see that. Uh, and then the positive wire going on like this. And now theoretically, if I plug it into a little charge monitor, Oh, it's uh, back feeding into the charge monitor. So if I uh, plug the charge monitor in here and then plug this in, it should display, it should beep and tell me it's charging. And it's actually showing a current of 280 milliamps. So um, initially then, I'm going to discharge this completely by leaving it on until it goes very dim. Technically speaking, if it's got over-discharge protection, the reason it goes dim is because the control circuit will actually start cutting off uh, as it gets closer to the threshold voltage it's designed to cut off at. And once I've uh, discharged this down, I'm going to plug it on to charge, and then I'll come back to you as soon as it's charged and tell you what the capacity was, because this unit measures the milliamp hour capacity and then cuts off. Charging cycle has now completed and it came in at a staggering 518 milliamp hour. So pretty much that's a 500 milliamp hour cell and you think, well, it looks quite big. So uh, that's slightly disappointing capacity unless it's just an old cell or maybe it's just a particularly low capacity one. So there you go. Uh, that could be upgraded, uh, but an interesting experiment nonetheless. Well, I guess I'll just disconnect these test wires then because the experiment is complete. Now, I have to say it's disappointing that the uh, cell inside is approximately half the capacity I was expecting, despite looking so big. But uh, that said, this lamp runs for many hours uh, when you leave it just lit and hanging. Um, and if you wanted, you can hack this. It's, it is hackable. That uh, big resistor at the back, the 0.47 ohm resistor tucked in there, if you were to change that, you could adjust the output of this light down the way you could also adjust it up there, but I wouldn't recommend that. Um, so that the LEDs ran at half the current, and uh, I mean, if you're camping or whatever this is for, then as it stands, it's almost too bright. It's uh, really quite a bright lamp indeed. Uh, I'll just turn the light off so you can marvel at just how fabulously bright it is and how you could easily, uh, I'll just pull this in and show you, easily read you know, stuff with it. In fact, it was about half that brightness you could read. So uh, you could double the battery life by changing that resistor to a 1 ohm resistor. But having said that, as it stands, if you were camping and if you got decent sunshine and this solar panel was out and it charged every day, then, you know, it's not a bad light at all, even with that lowish capacity cell. And uh, it's also hackable in the sense you could increase the size of that cell. So all in all, it's not bad.